Hi, I'm Jonathan here at Martin Lynch and & Sons and today a bit of an instructional video about the FT3 or the FTM300 and using Pi-Star on Zumspot. So you may be asking, why would you want to do this? Well, if you've got an FT3 or an FTM300 or in fact any other Yaesu system fusion radio uh, and you're not in range of a uh, fusion repeater or simplex node, then the Zumspot is a really easy way of getting on to uh, the digital networks in order to have worldwide communication with your with your radio. If you've uh, got a ZOM spot and you're looking at uh, branching out to a dig another digital mode, well, maybe System Fusion is the one for you, and it's very easy to get them to work with each other, and in fact, it's very easy in using the two together. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to plug in the, uh, the ZOM spot and we're going to load up the PiStar software on my computer. So the first thing we've got to do is plug in the Zumspot, which I've already done. Uh, now, the Zumspot will take about two minutes to boot. Uh, so if you plug it in initially and it doesn't do anything, don't worry, it is just configuring itself. And what we're going to do on the computer is we need to connect the computer to the Wi-Fi network that the Zumspot creates. So if we go into the settings here for the Wi-Fi, you can see there is a Wi-Fi network here called PiStar. Now, I've already got the details for this saved, but the password for that is just Raspberry. Full details about that is on our website. So now we've connected to that Wi-Fi network created by the Zumspot. This comes up, it flashes up on our screen, and it gives us all the bits and pieces in order to uh, configure it. Uh, if it just doesn't pop up for whatever reason, uh, no problem at all. Just go to your web browser and type in pi-star dot local uh, and that will bring up the same page but now we've got this on our screen we can configure so we're going to go to configuration and at this point it will uh, it might ask for a password at that point it shouldn't do in theory but it might do again it's just pi dash star and the password is raspberry uh, now we're going to um, basically configure this particular zoom spot uh, for my call sign uh, and my details so we're going to change that node call sign we're going to I'm going to pop in my call sign. Obviously, you're going to pop in your own call sign. Uh, we're going to leave the frequency as 438.8, which is the recommended frequency for digital hotspots uh, in the UK. Um, you can also set up your uh, latitude and longitude and your town locator if you want to. Uh, for the purposes of right now, I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not going to, but uh, it's possibly something you might want to consider doing on your own. We're going to leave everything else here the same. Before we go any further, we're just going to apply changes. It's going to flash up and say the information is not secure. That's just Mac being overzealous, uh, but that's okay. It's going to just do a quick refresh on that screen, and then we can get into the nitty gritty of actually configuring the Zumspot to connect to our own Wi Fi network. So the Zumspot has restarted, and again, we've connected to the uh, Pi Star Wi Fi network. On this occasion, I've just typed into my uh, Safari window. Uh, pi-star.local at the top, uh, just so that you can see what it looks like if you're doing it in full screen. Worth noting, don't have to use this on a Mac, it will also work on PC, you can do it from your tablet, whether that's uh, Android or iOS, uh, because you're not running any software here on the computer. You're literally, it's just a web interface that you're controlling the ZUM spot with. So we're gonna go back and hop back into that configuration uh, page. And on this occasion, we're gonna scroll right down to the bottom and we're going to click that button there which says configure Wi-Fi. So um, we're going to change the country code and we want in the UK, we want to change that to uh, GB and then we're going to scan for networks. Uh, so that's now going to take a few seconds, takes about 10 seconds or so in order to, to scan for Wi-Fi networks locally. Obviously you're looking out for your own Wi-Fi network at this point and you're going to at that point pop in the, the your own password. Uh, obviously here at the shop we're going to select our Wi-Fi that we have here uh, and I'm going to pop in the password. We're going to click Save and Connect. Now, it doesn't actually connect. What it does is it saves it into itself and then we've got to do a restart. But if we were to just go into that Configure Wi-Fi again, you can see that it saved that uh, network there. So next thing we're going to do is tell the Zumspot what mode it needs to be operating in. So we need it in YSF mode. And then we're going to, again, hit Apply Change. So at this point, the Zumspot is going to once again restart. Okay, so the last thing we've got to do is do a proper restart of the uh, Zumspot. We do that by going up to power and then clicking, uh, it's probably easiest to go shut down uh, and then we'll 
way to actually do it is to pull the power out of the sump spot and plug power back in. So essentially we're very nearly at the end of what we need to do. The last thing we need to do is obviously get the radios onto the particular frequency we want to operate on. So on the uh, FT3, I'm just going to tap on there. I'm going to go 4, 3, 8, 800. That's got there. And if I turn up the volume, we can see that we're already starting to hear some audio come through. Uh, the radio has gone into um, gone to a, a repeater offset. We'll fix that in a second. Uh, but we're already starting to hear audio, which is a good sign. Uh, it means that the sum support is working and it is connected up to the network. Uh, we could do the same thing on the uh, the FTM uh, 300 if we move that up to 438 and then use that to go uh, 800 and then also just change the mode. Uh, oh, no, it's already done. There you go. It's just auto detected the mode. So you can see if we can hear the red right up there. If we want to change some settings, that's very easy to do. So uh, it, we can either do it on the computer or we can do it on the radios. I'll show you both better. First one is to go onto the uh, computer. Again, you can, at least when you need, your computer needs to be connected to your normal Wi-Fi network rather than uh, the, the Pi Star is no longer creating its own Wi-Fi network. So we're going to go to admin this time, which will bring us up a little control panel and we can tell it to unlink request the change and the zoom spot will now disconnect from whatever network it was connected to um, so we can see down at the bottom left YSF network not linked okay so we've shown you how you can do it on the computer and change what particular room you're connected to uh, it's very easy if not easier to do it from the radio itself so I'm going to pick up the FT3 so we can see we're on 438.8 in uh, in digital mode and as much like if you're connecting to a repeater, we're going to hit the little X button. Essentially what that's going to do is it's going to send a little command to the hotspot and it's bringing up all of the settings. So what we could do now is as if we were again connected to a repeater, we can go search and direct. Uh, let's just go to all. That's going to wait for some data to come back from the ZUM spot. And it's going to show me a whole list of every single uh, connection point. So let's, for instance, CQ UK seems like a good choice, so we'll just tap on that. That's going to connect up. And there you go, it's connected up to CQ UK very easily. And if I turn up the audio, you can see there is someone transmitting there. So it's simple as that. To disconnect, well, it's very easy. You just press and hold, and that should disconnect it. Uh, or you don't have to, you can just go into a different, um, a different room if you wanted to. That's, uh, that's the uh, FT3, same process on the FTM300, exactly the same with that, with that X functionality. Uh, I won't do it at the moment because it's just in transmit, but it's the same functionality and you can connect and disconnect from all the various reflectors or all rooms as they're called on Fusion from the radio without having to touch the hotspot. So if you wanted to, you could hide the, the hotspot away uh, somewhere so you're not going to use it and just carry the handheld with you. And it's a very easy and simple method to get onto uh, some of the some of the fusion rooms. Now it's just worth saying that this is not the same system uh, that you'd get from a proper wires Xbox. If you've got uh, the FT3 and you want to go onto the proper wires X system, uh, you would need the uh, SCU39 cable. If you've got the FTM300, you would need the SCU40 cable. Uh, those cables are available and in stock, and those will get you onto the, the proper YSX system. This is an amateur supported system, uh, but there are several links across, America Link and CQ UK being rooms that are linked across onto the proper YSX system. So there we have it. That's how to get going with the FTM300, the FT3, uh, with the ZUM spot, and say the, the premise can be applied to pretty much any ASUS system fusion radio, uh, handheld or mobile, uh, anything from FT1, I suppose, all the way through FT991 as well. Any questions, feel free to pop them in the uh, comments box and we will uh, do our best to come back. Of course, you can always email us as well. Uh, Gary is very knowledgeable on these things as well. Uh, that's it for now. All of these items you've seen are in stock at hamradio.co.uk and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.